What is going on guys, Twitter one Maxwell here and welcome to episode 29 of the TNA TW series. If you join us just on our go home show before we get to lockdown. And again we're staying in the tri-state area here as we're at the Lacurious Centre in Pennsylvania again. So hoping to continue on this good wave of momentum that we're on and hopefully have a good pay per view and continue this, as I say this great run that we're on. We've got 18 segments booked in, it's mostly angles which will kind of build up the, the 5 on 5 match. Plus then add in other stuffs that's going to happen at the pay-per-view, other matches and other feuds we've got going. So let's just quickly run with the show and let's see what's happening. It's held in front of 8,945 people at the Lacurious Centre and it starts off with Kurt Angle and Diamond Dallas Page are in the ring. They compete against each other verbally to try and persuade Jeffro to sign with one of their teams. After hearing their case, Jeffro decides to sign with Kurt Angle. Joining Team Angle and attacks DDP, B-75. Jeff Ronda performed the Battle of the Company storyline advances and Kurt Angle came across well. Jeff Rowe is learning to show more charisma. Jeff Rowe is developing better performance skills and the dot sheet just really penalising Jeff Hardy. So how good a segment would that have been if it wasn't for Jeff Hardy? A quick, ca a quick cut of the camera to the backstage area shows that Velvet Sky has arrived in the, the building at D plus 48. Nothing really improved there. Backstage, Kenny King is showing telling Diamond Dallas Page that he's got his back later on tonight. So Kenny King is joining in Team DDP. I got a B minus 76 rating. No work or skills, but that's all good there. And a match that had some good action, but not much in the way he Red Titus defeats Samuel Shaw in 903 by pinfall with the Muff Diver, a C minus 55, because obviously there's no momentum with Samuel Shaw. And that is what's going to penalise us in the Yep, in the dirt sheet for holding back and inconsistency. Nah, not bad. In a grand display of brutality, Tracy Brooks orders her client Redman to attack an unaware and quickly bloodied Red Titus. A D, a 47. Titus comes across well. Redman is still struggling, which is worrying. So I thought with the manager angle in here, it would help him. I think we just need to try and get him some, some momentum. That might help him. But that's just to set up their match for the pay per view. Beth then challenges Velvet Sky to a loser leaves town match. The knockout storyline progresses and I guess a 62 C rating. Basically, the plan is whoever loses the match will take a small hiatus and will bring some other knockouts into the division. Bang for the safety of his locker room, Magnus avoids being spotted by Bobby Roode, who is walking down the corridor in the opposite direction. When the coast is clear, Magnus makes his move. A solid 77 B rating here. Great work there from Magnus. Uh, it was limited because it was short, but really, you know, just run about the locker room in the backstage area, it's not going to last very long. So it's a good segment showing that Magnus is ship here to Bobby Roode. A music video is then shown to promote some more Joe. Nice wee short clip just to kind of give some more Joe some time. A C-57. In a match that's some good action and average heat, Adam Cole defeats Christopher Daniels in 12-12 by pinfall with a Florida key. B-75. No skill improvements. And again, everything's good there, apart from both of them holding back and the declining physical ability of Christopher Daniels, which I'm still assuming is better than most wrestlers at his age. The model citizens and bad influence are then in the ring, arguing the model citizens finally have enough an attack, and eventually driving both Daniels and Kazarian through tables to make their point. The segment ends with the model citizens standing above their fallen opponents. C, C rating, 60, the tag storyline advances here. No worker improvements, but again, it's just basically the tag team feud is going to be between those two. And the model citizens, Smith and Galloway, are just showing their dominance as tag team champions before they defend their titles. In a match that's some good action and average heat, Chris Hero and Club Enigma defeat Austin Aries and the Wolves in 1902 when Chris Hero defeated David Richards by pinfall with a death blow. A 82 rating B match, so that is a solid six man tag. Between obviously Aries and the Wolves and AC3, Hawkins and Hero. The Battle of the Independent King storyline improves. Chris Hero is improving his performance skills. Um, and there's a lot of minuses, so that match could have been even better. Which is scary. Then Adam Cole spends a whole interview just talking about how great DDP is. If I didn't know better, I'd say Adam Cole is an obsessed fan. It's just Adam Cole's way of saying he's in Team DDP for the match at lockdown. Solid. 72 B minus there. In a match that's some good action, 
an average heat bob, a rude defeat shards gas barb and 943 by pinfall, with a rude bomb followed, watch, following botched interference by Magnus. Good work from Washington at ringside, with nothing really for shards at the moment, so that's why he's just in this kind of match to job to the number one contender. Bobby Rude's improving his performance skills, and I guess a 70 and a C plus rating. Decent. Following the conclusion of the match, Magnus then retrieves a sledgehammer from underneath the ring and tries to use it on Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode, though, has other ideas and not only dispossesses Magnus of the weapon, but uses it against him. Unable to block, Magnus sends a, a shot straight to the cranium and is sent tumbling out the ring, leaving Bobby Roode standing tall. So it's a good segment, again, continuing on, it should continue on their storyline, apparently it's not. But it's a 78 rating, B, and that is pretty much set up their match for the pay-per-view. In a match that's some good action on average heat, Bobby Lashley defeated Jeff Rowe in 13-40 by pinfall with a Dominator. 61 C rated, not a great match between them. Jeff's improving his performance skills, the negatives would have came just purely because of Jeff Hardy. Yeah, low morale and poor gimmick, so I mean, well, there's nothing I can do, he's stuck in that gimmick for a bit. The match is over, Bobby Lashley walks over and offers a sign, his hand as a sign of respect to Jeff Hardy for putting up a great fight. And the two competitors shake hands. 66, C plus rating. We are going to turn Bobby Lashley face. The turn was a complete success. He's going to join Team Kurt Angle at the pay per view. Makes it 4v5 with one more man still to be revealed. For Team Angle, and that will happen at the pay per view. Then in the ring, Diamond Dallas Page and Kurt Angle have a contract signing for the upcoming match. Taz is Seven is a host of the contract signing. DDP signs the contract before handing over to Kurt Angle, who then jots his name, making the match official. B rating 77. Taz had a dreadfully steel character, so make change up. Taz performed poorly. Kurt Angle looked good. And pretty much all the negatives is just really Taz. So let me look at Taz and fix him. This indicates pre booking, we don't worry about that. And then DDP is in the ring with Kurt Angle and is trying to make him see that he can't hope to beat him as he holds all the power. Kurt Angle gets angry, beats up DDP, leaving him down and out. At B plus 87, Kurt Angle's just saying, I'm going to win this match at lockdown, our team's going to win it. That's a great way to close the show. Penalised for being done to a cold crowd, but that would be an awesome segment, that. And that means the show finishes with a 72 B-, so I hope I'll get a wee bit better with a lot of the good segments, bud. This show is just using the authority figures a lot. He's getting us a lot of high ratings, and that can only be a positive, and the show increased our popularity in 16 regions. So I'll have most of the pay-per-view sorted. Um, I think I might need to add a few things in just to kill time. When it gets to lockdown, especially since we're going to have 5v5 workers in the main event. But um, I'll work at something. I might do like a match early in the show to decide who comes in first and whatnot. You know, the kind of things that I've done before in TNA. You know, quickly see Impact Wrestling has drawn a lot of praise. That's good. Nothing else there that's overly needed to be seen. And the email says we've done a 401, so just down from last week's episode, which was a 411. So that is us, guys. We are now just two days away from TNA lockdown. I'm quite looking forward to it. It should be a good show. And hopefully, you guys will join me for it. So until then, guys, this was Twitter on Maxwell, and I'll speak to you again real soon. Bye bye.